Hi, um, welcome to uh, a little overview of using a digital camera. Um, I'm going to be using my rather old but trusted uh, bridge camera. Um, bridge camera is kind of a, the, the, the stepping stone from a, a basic compact to a, a full digital SLR. Um, obviously it's got a bigger lens, um, but this does not unscrew like on a digital SLR. Um, really nice little camera. Um, so let's just talk through the basics of getting uh, a, a, some good shots, uh, just using it in its most simplest form. So first of all, we're going to take off the lens cap. Always a good idea if you've got the camera with an extended lens. Uh, it doesn't want to force the motor trying to push this off. Um, really as well, we need to try and keep all of that out of the way while we're going to be looking at the screen and we don't really want it dangling in front of um, uh, our lens obviously okay so first things first we need to just have a quick overview of the the sort of controls of what we've got here obviously we've got the large screen at the back we've got uh, the wheel uh, which helps us navigate through different settings and selections and options and on a on a bridge and a digital slr we also have the wheel on the top so we can go through different modes and settings. Now we're going to keep this simple and to be honest I'm a bit of a cheat because I like to keep it on auto mode a lot. Um, we're going to leave it on auto mode which means when we turn the camera on like so this is going to basically do our thinking for us. So when we use auto mode or intelligent mode or any kind of automated default setup mode on the camera, and most cameras will have them, um, what this is going to do is going to take into consideration things such as the light. Um, so wherever you're taking that picture, the light is going to be different. It's going to work out how long to leave the shutter open for to let the right amount of light in so you're not over or under exposed. Um, it's going to take into consideration things such as, I don't know if you can see that, anti-vibration. So if we're a little bit shaky or in a bit of a, a windy day, um, the camera will stabilize slightly. Now, as we can see on the back screen here, we're on auto. It's not going to use flash unless it thinks it really needs to because it's on an automatic setting so again you don't have to worry about that on this one we're not going to be doing any sound recording and as i said this has got our uh, anti-vibration on it so first things first we check we're on that okay yeah that's fine we've obviously got a nice clean lens now the most important thing here is the shutter button. When we take a picture with a digital camera, especially on automatic mode, we need to give the camera a chance to help us. And by doing this, when we press the shutter, if we press it all the way down in one go, it will just take a picture. However, if we press it down and hold it down very, very slightly, your camera may beep, you may hear a slight beep, and remembering what that actual icon means there is telling me that it's not going to sound my beep because I've turned mine off. Um, so if we press it down a little bit, sort of feel the pressure halfway down and then completely press the button, it will take a photograph. Now, as I've just pointed this out of the window or potentially at my ceiling, I'm not quite sure what the picture is going to be. But we'll have a look. Now on all digital cameras, you have a little triangle in a square, which means playback. Now this may be a separate button on the top here or here, like on mine, it may be down here. It could be anywhere on the kind of dashboard, if you like, of the back of the camera. Now to view the picture, you press that. And there it is, my wonderful picture of my window. Now, while I've got my picture open like that, if I've taken many more, I can zoom backwards 
or forwards using the left and right. And here's some of my projects in the background. So we can zoom left or right through our pictures. Now, if we want to go back to taking pictures again, we must press this and get off of it. Now, we also have the facility on the camera to zoom in and out. And this is what we do with this. Now, all cameras will have a W or a T for wide angle or telephoto. This is your zoom. So if I put mine on telephoto where it's searching like a telescope, or I can take push it back to normal. Wide angle means it's going to get a, a wider view, a, a larger area in. Whereas a teles telephoto is more like a telescope sort of zooming in onto something in the distance. So if we're doing far away shots, telephoto, if we're just doing normal shots of things in front of us that are quite close, wide angle. Now, if we take a picture again, some nice lovely skirting board, and go back to our playback, we can also use the zoom on the top, the wide angle in the telephoto, to actually zoom into our picture when we're on playback. Hopefully you can't see the dust. But what we must do is always zoom back out to its normal size before we can come out of playback and go back to taking photos. Okay, so we've looked at the basic sort of dashboard and icons that we may come across sort of straight away in using the camera. Um, normally cameras come with quite large instruction books or guidelines on, on YouTube or on, on downloads from the camera manufacturer's site. Um, a piece of advice would be to just leave it on your auto or auto intelligent mode for, for a while and just get used to the camera. Get used to the weight of it, how it feels when you're, con when you're sort of holding it and, and get comfortable with it in your hands. Now, being a bridge, this has got more of a grip there. Compacts being the little square, smaller, slim cameras, whilst they're a lot better for putting in your pocket and just taking everywhere with you because these sort of larger cameras are a little bit heavier and bulky. Um, a, a little compact is going to need a different way of being held. Um, some people tend to pinch them sort of top and bottom like that, so they've always got a finger uh, over the shutter. Um, really, it's up to you how you hold your camera. I can take this one out and just hold it one-handed if I want to. Sometimes I rest it on my hand, like a little table, just depending where I am and what position I'm in taking the photograph. Um, and the same goes for using um, anything around you. If, it's, if it is a windy day or you're a little bit shaky with your camera, why not rest it on a gate post or, uh, or a bin or a bit of road traffic sort of signage or something, anything that you can use as a, as a, staid, a stable kind of uh, platform for your camera. Um, and also try and keep it straight as well, otherwise we get a lot of kind of going downhill or uphill kind of photos. So really, uh, you've got to get used to your camera, its weight and its size. Um, sometimes just tucking your elbows in together as best you can and resting against your chest. And as long as you're not panting like a dog, um, you, you should have a more stable photograph. Um, so once we've got used to the weight of it and what it does, keep it on auto mode for a bit. Take lots of photos. Remember, it's a digital camera. There's no film in this just the SD card or the mini SD card, um, which is going to take so many more photographs than a roll of film. And the beauty is we can get rid of those photographs when we don't want them. Um, so I'm going to turn mine on and I'm going to quickly show you how to get rid of the photograph. So if we go back to our playback, there is my lovely photo of the room from earlier. Now. On mine, I have a little dustbin there, which is also part of this button here. So 
in playback it only ever works with a dustbin so if I click on there it says erase do you want to do it yes or no the camera will always check for us now we had left and right for scrolling through our pictures we also have up and down for selecting options so I'm going to click on that one there so yes I want to do it we've always got an OK button in the middle all of these wheels have an OK button and while that says yes if I OK it there it will delete it and I can do the same with this one click on the bin up to yes um, if I change my mind I can always go back to no and then OK but in this case we're going to go yes and OK and it's gone so now we've got rid of some of our photos so get used to doing that take lots of photos I'm going to turn mine off remember digital cameras do like to eat batteries and uh, if you're using the normal dry cell type batteries the normal kind of ones you buy in packs in shops they won't last very long it's, it's always good to use some rechargeables you can normally buy a charger and batteries quite cheaply nowadays um, depending on your camera it might take four or two batteries um, but it's, it's a lot easier just to be able to keep recharging your batteries so turn it off if it doesn't uh, like mine go to sleep that quickly some cameras will turn themselves off if you don't play with them enough they get bored um, so it's good to bear in mind your battery life and always check that your batteries are going to be good enough for whatever session you're going to go out and shoot so when you go out and shoot your pictures and do take lots and lots take more than one picture of the same thing try it from different heights from different angles from different positions try and think about how the light bounces off of it how it interacts with it um, a good thing to try and remember when you are taking pictures of anything that's not really kind of like a landscape I mean landscapes have their own merits uh, because we can try and look for sort of lead lines in the in the in the in the landscape so you may have telephone wires that take your eye towards a subject in the distance or a field uh, or a fence around a field that, that, that links different parts of the image together remember when we take a photograph we want to make it interesting and not just easily sort of um, looked at and thrown away we want want it to be studied like an oil painting if you want if you're doing more close-up stuff so for example I've got all this detail on the floor here which you may not be able to see but it's all that wood grain of the floor as an example I might wait, look at how the light sits on it I might try and zoom in and get as close as I can to it and pick out the detail there's lots of ways of doing it but think about colour shape uh, and texture or colour form and texture think about trying to capture those three main ingredients into your picture and it will make it more interesting now if you are doing close-up work and each camera is going to be different think about the distance from the end of your lens to whatever you're going to take a picture of now my rule of thumb on this tends to be if you do your hand as a spread like that from the end of your lens to the item that you're going to take a photo of for example that knot of wood there if you can see it if you go don't go any closer than that spread on your hand then that will give you a good starting point you may be able to move in closer you may need to come further out it all depends on your camera's lens um, if you are finding that you're not getting or not being able to see that well what the, the, the screen is showing you just keep pressing your little shutter button down a little bit halfway to help it focus and then you will see what the camera will actually take if you press it halfway down and you're too close and the screen shows a furry image or a, or a kind of a fuzzy looking image then you've got to come back you're asking too much of the lens and also remember where the light direction is coming from you don't want to cast shadows onto the subject you're taking pictures of and you've also got to think that if you get too close to a subject 
So for example, if you've got a flower there and you put your lens right in it, you're blocking the light from around the subject, which means you're going to make it darker. So it's going to be less interesting. But really, it's all about having fun, trying different things. You're not going to break your camera. All you're going to do is lose yourself in hopefully an hour or two of enjoyment, taking photographs and as there's no film involved, you can always throw them away and start again if you're not happy with them. But it's always worth taking your pictures at the end of the day and trying to view them on uh, maybe a laptop. Um, if you can, connect your computer to a laptop. If you have a cable supplied with the, computer, uh, with the camera, you can also plug it into a lot of televisions nowadays. It's good to see your pictures big because you will see stuff on the screen that you just don't see on the lens. And it's good that sometimes you accidentally capture things that really do make the picture. So it's always worth investigating your pictures more thoroughly than just on the back of the lens if you can. So I hope you found that useful and uh, maybe we'll do some more of these and uh, in the meantime take some photographs and if you're really proud of them, maybe send them into Independent Arts and we can have a look at them. Okay, thank you.